Kick off. Dave Spencer's kickoff. Taken down at the 20 yard line. Manella on the tackle. Patriots will take over first and 10 from the 22. That was Bernie Keeley returning that kickoff. Well, here we go. First offensive series. The Bucks of CB West on defense. The Patriots of CB East on offense. Kale pitches out. Bobby Branch takes the pitch out from Keel. Callum on the tackle for West. Loss of two on the play. Let's call it a second and 12. That's exactly what I was talking about last. Uh, Mike likes to use a five-man front most of the time in the first play, come up with a four-man uh, defense, and uh, he had his uh, halfback, cornerback, right up on the line of scrimmage, he just sat right out there waiting for uh, Branch. Here come the Patriots. Keel back, handing off again. Branch tackled in the vicinity of the line of scrimmage. Riccone doing a little testing here too. He went outside on the first play, now he's trying the interior line. He wants to find out if there are any weaknesses in that West defensive unit. Let's call it third and 10 for the Patriots. Yes, what he's doing, he's, he's uh, testing all areas to see whether they're gonna rotate or whether they're gonna move and whether they're gonna stay in their five or their four. And uh, West is giving a di different defensive look both times. Kill at quarterback. Bobby Branch right behind him. Kill rolls out. He's looking to throw. He throws downfield. Two defenders from West knock it down. It's incomplete. We'll bring up a fourth and ten in an obvious punting situation as the Patriots feel to move the ball on their first offensive series. That was uh, quite interesting that time in that type of situation. They, uh, they double covered uh, Mignon right off the bat over on this uh, far sideline. Bill, are they playing man-to-man -man or zone coverage? They've been playing uh, zone, and they played uh, uh, one and a half men on McMahon that last play. This looks like they're going to try to block it. Punt gets off. It's not a very good punt. Very close to a block. Ball will be down in the vicinity of the 44-yard line. West getting good field position on their first offensive series here. They'll have the ball on the right between the 44 and 45-yard line. First and 10 for West. Todd Norley comes in at quarterback. 6'2", 185-pound senior. They'll have John Spinoza, six foot two ten senior, behind him. A real workhorse in that backfield for the Bucks of Central Bucks West. Here comes a pitch out to Chris Mann. Mann picks up a couple yards on his first play. That was a little different offensive formation, not one you're going to see every day. That's a, a double slot, two men out in the slot position and trying to run a power play to that side. And Coach uh, Chuck stayed in his normal five-man front. Brings up a second and seven for the Bucks. Bobby Callum shifting. Spinoza, the power fullback right up the middle of the field he picks up about three yards uh, Mike must think uh, there must be something a little bit uh, weak on that uh, left defensive side because he's run both plays and both have been from a power type situation that was a strong right set the last time here he comes back again with that uh, double slot double slot right normally a quarterback Norley sprinting around his right side. He picks up enough yardage for the first down, and in their first series of play, West staying right, picking up a first and 10. I think uh, this is one of Chuck's biggest concerns, that if they do uh, stop Spinoza up the middle, that Morley can take the football, and he can run with it as well as throw the ball pretty well, and there's a good example. Again, uh, without overemphasizing it at the present time, everything has been too uh, west offensive right. 
And here you come again with the uh, double slot. Double slight right, Norley at quarterback. He takes the snap. He hands off to Spinoza. Spinoza tripping up by himself. Could be bad footing on the play. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. will bring up a second and ten. We should mention some of those people on that CB East defensive line. You have nose guard John Dunbar, who was in on that last play. Left tackle Tim Scarborough. Right tackle Greg LaGreca. Right end Paul Farrington. Left end Bob Tate. Those guys don't get much credit, but that's where the work takes place, down in the trenches. Here we go. We have a second and 11. Here's a pass. His favorite receiver, Chris Mann, on a little peep shot over, over the line of scrimmage. He doesn't pick up enough yardage for a first down, but he picks up about six yards. Make it third and four. While you were talking about the uh, CB East interior 5-5, uh, five, five, Les, you have to realize, too, that only two of those are seniors. Both teams young in the trenches. Both coaches just elated to be here playing for the Bucksmont Championship with such young linemen. Norley rolling out to the right. He picks up a first down. He's tackled down past the... 18-yard line, they'll spot the ball in the vicinity of the 18. Another first down. You have to respect Norley because he always has the threat of passing. And the defensive man just pauses for a second and Norley takes advantage and that's the second first down that he's picked up rushing. Yes, Norley's a, an excellent thrower. He's probably one of the finest that's been around here in a long time. He's a pure thrower. And he does have the good size of 6'2", 185. There, there we go again to a power eye to the right. Number 20, Chris Mann takes the pitch out from Norley. Mann, a wing in that power right formation. He's a 5'11", 155 pound senior. I saw him play in two other games for West and he's an all round ball player. Yes, uh, Chris can hurt you a lot of ways, Les. Uh, he's a good pass receiver. And he's, he's an excellent runner in, in the open field with fairly decent speed. Here's a new formation, Norley coming up. He's back to throw. Incomplete pass, Chris Mann is intended receiver. If the pass would have been completed, it would have been a first down. However, good defensive coverage there. In for East was number 34, Scott Runyon, 5'11", 185 pounds, senior. That brings up a third and eight. On that last play, uh, I think West tried to confuse East a little bit because they narrowed down their splits a great deal, which is not something they usually do, uh, you know, in a pass pattern such as that. They give a little bit wider, but they're almost uh, leather to leather like they would be on a, uh, a regular power play up the middle, and the formation led you to believe the same thing. Officials time out there to adjust some equipment. We have a third and eight. Just six minutes left in the first quarter. Norley going over the middle. Nichols making the reception. Brett Nichols, a 6'1", 177-pound senior, running a slant pattern over the middle, picks up the first down, puts the ball on the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal to goal from the five from the Bucks from CB West. That was, a, that was an excellent call because the formation was to the left, and he'd come back and uh, hit the end who was uh, wide open in the middle. Norley had a scamper to get that pass off. Here we go, first and goal from the five. Pitch out goes to man. He takes it over from the right side, and the Bucks of CB West are on the scoreboard with 5:27 left left in the first quarter. Good blocking on that right side of the line. That was excellent. That was exactly what I was talking about, uh, Les, in uh, with Chris Mann. Uh, Chris found a little bit of daylight that was there, and he just burned it right on in, uh, picking the daylight and turning and going right upfield. Okay, we're coming up now for the extra point. Spencer lining up for the point after attempt. Bill, you called the shot. Mike Petton wanted to go to that right side, and he went down the field for that touchdown all on the right side. Here's Spencer's PAT. It's up. 
and it's good. With 527 left in the first quarter, that makes the score the Bucks of Central Bucks West 7, the Patriots 0. We'd like to remind you that this cable guest would not be possible without the support of our fine sponsors. One thing you can do to help us thank them is let them know you saw their commercial <laughs> here on Homeview Cable TV. Their support through advertising dollars is invaluable to us. And if you'd like to continue seeing more local sports and local programs, support our sponsors and let them know you saw them here on Homeview. This is the public access channel, and to make it work, we need you to support our sponsors and to get everyone in the community involved. We thank you. Fine drive by the Bucks, Bill. Excellent drive, Wes. I think the, the thing is that every, everything is, is on the table right now. All the marbles, the bragging rights, the Bucksmont title, and Mike Pegg showed how bad he wants it because of the uh, different offensive sets that he uh, showed. He passed, he ran, he let his quarterback run. Uh, he just opened a wide right now. He just didn't wait. He wasn't going to uh, delay any longer than the first first series. Just go right at it and try and take it right now. This will be a big offensive series for the Patriots because Chuck Riccone knows that they have to come back to stay in the ball game. Oh, yes, they absolutely have to. Spencer's kickoff <clears throat> comes back to the 28-yard line. Shearn on the tackle. Now the Patriots have to face the test. Bobby Keel, a quarterback. Behind him, Chris Hilborn, number 33. Bobby Branch, 32, playing the wingback is John Mignon, number 24. Hilburn, number 33 on the carry. He picks up about, have to wait until they spot the ball. Give him a gain of three yards, make it second and seven. Riccone over there talking to his defensive unit, making some adjustments because he realizes they're going to have to stop the Bucks. Oh, yes, I'm sure Chuck is going to uh, make quite a few adjustments and uh, handle that uh, double slot. Some people would call it... Uh, uh, triple receivers. I'd call a double stop because of the close, uh, closeness that they're lined up. Here's Keel. He's going to throw. Mignon, number 24, coming out of that slot position, coming down, catching the ball. Officials are having a little meeting here, spotting the ball. What they're doing is really eyeing it up to see how close they are to a first down. I believe that they're short. Should bring up a second and a good yard to go for the Patriots. Well, this is exactly what we talked about, uh, how important this game is. So you can see Chuck is going to come right back. He's going to come right back at uh, West exactly the way they went at him the first semester. Okay, it's third down. Correct me. Third down and less than one. Excellent call. Bobby Keel on the quarterback keeper. Good blocking in there. Officials indicate that he picked up sufficient yardage for a first down, gives them a first and ten. And the Patriots responding well on their first real offensive series, moving the ball. Both quarterbacks have a balanced attack. Neither one is afraid to throw the ball, and that should make for an interesting afternoon. The Bucksmont Championship here at stake. Keels back again. He's scrambling in the backfield. His receivers are covered, so he's going to take off. He gets the ball down to the 48-yard line. It's going to be close to another first down. We'll have to wait and see where the officials mark it. This is exactly what we were talking about, Les. we got two quarterbacks that can run with the ball. Both of them can throw the uh, ball, ball very well, and they're always a threat when they can do both jobs. All right, the officials this time aren't going to eyeball it. They're going to measure it. Let's have a word from our sponsor while we're waiting for this measurement. The good people over at Doylestown Printing Shop would like to congratulate both Central Bucks East and Central Bucks West football teams on their great seasons. For all your printing needs, stop by and see the Doylestown Printing Shop on Old Easton Road. They're professionals, whether the job is industrial, commercial, or personal. By the way, Doylestown Printing is moving on December 21st to the Central Bucks Industrial Aero Park, and their new address will be 205 Airport Boulevard right behind Bender Mills Chevrolet. That's Doylestown Printing Company. They put their best impressions on paper. First and 10 for the Patriots. 
as Kale brings his offensive line up to the ball. Branch carrying the ball. He picks up about seven yards. Okay, Bill, I, I, I must have messed up on that call. They didn't have enough yardage for the first down. They were just short, so they went and picked it up on that one, picking up a big chunk of uh, real estate out there. Now they have the first and ten, and the Patriots are on the march. Number 24, John Mignon taking the handoff from Kale. He picks up a couple yards. Again, uh, <coughs> we're uh, setting a, a little bit, might be setting a little bit of a pattern here, uh, alternating his backs uh, with trap plays and counter type action. So uh, you're going to see, you're going to see quite a bit of this, and uh, you're going to see Kiel uh, throw on on the run. I think a little bit more. Kale coming up. He's tackled in the backfield. Great defensive pursuit. Number 88, Bob Chitowitz in there making the initial contact. Good defensive play as they came through the line of scrimmage. The defensive unit celebrating. People down in our production truck working hard. We now have video right in front of us here as our monitor is now operative. Well, that's, that's a good example. That's what I was talking about with Keel coming out. And, of course, you've got to have a little help up front, which he didn't have that time. And now Chuck is going to have to come back and throw on this play. Well, we have about a third and 13 for the Patriots. Good defensive play by Bob Sitchewitz. And there he is again. Sitchewitz coming in from the right side this time, blowing right through. No real protection for Bobby Keel. That will put the Patriots in a deep, deep hole. Yeah, I think uh, you see the reason that uh, Chuck yeah, called that play because uh, Sitchewitz made the great play uh, the last time coming from the back side. He chased the quarterback and caught him on the side away. So I figured he's coming flat, so he's going to come back with a bootleg and catch him inside. But Sitchewitz uh, played it very, very well. Okay, fourth and a large piece of real estate. Here's the punt, and it's blocked. It's recovered by West. However, there are penalty markers down on the play. Let's wait and see what happens. They pick the penalty markers up. West will take over possession. The penalty probably against East and denied. Ball is spotted on the 33-yard line. West getting excellent field position here, Bill. Oh, yes, this is, all right, now he's coming to the left with his double slot formation. Norley on the keeper. Well, Greca in on the tackle for East. Gain of about three on that play, make it second and seven. Well, that's the end of the first quarter, Bill. A quick quarter here with the score. CB West 7, CB East 0. While we have a pause in the action, let's take a break. And here's a message from one of today's sponsors. Here's the start of the second quarter. Norley rolling left. Pass. Bob Chitowitz on the reception. Chitowitz having an excellent day, coming in on two key sacks, then coming back to make that reception. Real fine, real fine uh, football player. Uh, he's a young man who's come a long way in the last couple of years. I want to say something on the play before this. Uh, Dunbar, number 50, has been stunning quite regularly as a nose man. And I don't know whether it was a call play that Norley ran the quarterback sneak or whether he just saw him cheating a little bit and jumped through. You see there is quite a... Quite a good hole in there because Dunbar sort of leans a little bit to where he's going to jump. Here comes Norley. He pitches out to Mann. Mann trying to get around the left side. He stops short of the line of scrimmage. 
Brings up a second and ten. Young in on the tackle for the Patriots. No gain, second and ten. West realizing that if they can get on the scoreboard now, early in the second period, they could put the Patriots in an uncompromising position. Oh, very, very tough. There's the pitch back, fumbled. Looked like Mann just couldn't find the handle. He stumbled a little bit. <coughs> Good pursuit by the Patriots. Brings up a third and 11 approximately. I think the Patriots confused them a little bit on the last play. They jumped their defense at the line of scrimmage and that always gives them a little bit of a problem. There's Norley throwing. Bobby Callum was his intended receiver. That went right under his arm. Excellent call, excellent pattern, and Bobby just lost the ball for a second, and it comes up as an incomplete. One thing we should note, the Patriot defensive line made a good move to get to Norley. On that pass, you don't have much time. You have no. to get rid of the ball quickly, and they're putting the pressure on. Okay. This is the big play, Les. Fourth and ten, and West is going for it. I can hear you. You can't hear me? Uh, Rowley holding on to the last possible minute, rolling out to his left. Incomplete pass. Situas was the intended receiver down there. He just couldn't work his way free. Big defensive play for the Patriots because they stopped the Bucks, and now they'll give their offensive unit a chance to come back here in the second quarter. Yes, the, de the defensive end on that side really yeah. is responsible yeah. for that, Les. He did a nice job of stringing everything out, and uh, uh, Norley actually did not see the opening that was there for him. Here comes Racconi's offensive unit up to the line of scrimmage. Look at this. Chris Hilburn breaking away from that line of scrimmage, picking up a good piece of real estate on the ground, runs the ball up to the, just short of the 45 yard line. Needless to say, that's a first down rushing, and that's the first real surge that we've seen by the CB East offensive line as they just <laughs> made a big hole there, and Chris Hoborn taking advantage of it. Patriots on the move here with that big running play. Bobby Branch gets the handoff this time from Keel. He picks up about two yards, making second and eight. Second and eight for the Patriots. Bill, does that make the offensive line feel a little better making the hole like that? Oh yes, when they when they blow the defense off like that, then they start to get their enthusiasm up a little bit, uh, and it gives them a you know gives them that enthusiasm to keep the drive going. I think stopping the Bucks down in the last series is a big help also. Second and eight, Keel at quarterback. John Mignon going out to the right side. He'll get the handoff on a semi reverse. He stopped in his own backfield. The defensive line of the Bucks was not fooled as they met Mignon with open hands. So no gain on that play. Uh, I'm not exactly sure right at this point what uh, Mike's uh, defensive scheme is. He had an overload with his linebackers on that side, and they came right with Mignon. So uh, there must be some sort of a key that uh, Chuck has been giving away throughout the season. Third and nine for the Patriots. This is a big play for them because they got to get this first down. Keel back throwing, intercepted on a deflection. Number 12, Todd Norley coming up with the interception. And that has to hurt the Patriots because they needed a first down there to keep their drive alive. And what happens, Todd Norley, number 12, quarterback and defensive back, comes up with the interception and the Bucks have the ball back. That's why uh, Norley's so valuable to this West Ball Club and why they fought a little bit during the year uh, when he was uh, playing hurt because he couldn't play both ways, and he is an excellent athlete that is capable of playing both ways. Here comes that double slot formation again. A bend, we're coming back to the right. Okay, here we have a fumble on the play. The ball's rolling all over the field and out of bounds. 
It's going to depend on the call. It's, uh, I think it's still going to be West ball. Left. The official ruled that the ball went out of bounds while West had last touched yes. it or really didn't lose control of it in that sense. So West maintains possession. That's a big break because that ball was bouncing around and anyone could have pounced on it. Let's set up the situation here now. We have a second and 11 approximately. The ball spotted on the 37, between the 37 and the 38 yard line. And the Bucks coming up with a big break there just to maintain possession of that ball because it would have given East good field position. Here we come with the double slot formation to the left again. Norley sprinting to the double slot. Has the Oh, another shared possession ball. Norley's, Norley's pass just hanging up in the air. Situates out there. Good defensive play on the part of the back for the Patriots. I think that's Rusty Paulus, number nine. 5'11", 165 pound junior. Uh, he made that a tough play for Situates. Situates having the superior height. Anyway, it's all over now and it brings up a third and 11. Norley rolling back. He sets up a screen pass to number 20, Chris Mann. Mann gets some good blocking, picks up more than enough yardage for the first down. I've seen that screen pass executed excellently by West in both the Hatboro game and the Upper Perk game, and that time Norley setting it up by rolling back. That was an, ex that was an excellent call, and it was set from a too tight, uh, tight end formation, and uh, just, just went perfectly. Okay, first and 10 for the Bucks. Norley doing it all here this afternoon, passing a couple quarterback keepers and a key interception. John Spinoza on the handoff. <coughs> Spinoza picks up a couple yards. John, a workhorse uh, in that Hatboro game, he did an outstanding job both offensively and defensively, and he's more or less the, the bull in that backfield. Yeah, I think it, uh, when they are running uh, Spinoza and running him up the middle, what they're doing, they're running right at uh, Dunbar, 5'6", uh, 165-pounder, who plays a great game as a stunning lineman, but when you run right at him, it presents him a little bit of a problem. Norley back to throw. He's being pursued. He'll hang on to it and force out of bounds in the vicinity of the 42-yard line. Good coverage by the Patriots on that play, and that's why Todd didn't throw the ball. Todd was very hesitant on that. If he'd uh, uh, just turned it on, once he cleared the corner, if he just turned it on and ran, he probably would have gained an awful lot more yardage, but he was very hesitant on what, what he should do. I don't know whether his leg is bothering him a little bit again or, or not. But uh, I think his philosophy was, let's pick up as much as I can and then go out of bounds. Brings up a third and one. Ball spotted on the 41. Norley coming up to the line of scrimmage. He's running the power eye. Pitches the ball back to Chris Mann. Mann has more than enough yardage for the first down on that one, Bill. Oh, yes. Very, very run, well run. Two tight end offense again. Uh, power, two power backs leading through in a slight toss. You see who's on the bottom again is uh, young Dunbar. Again, he was stunning and was able to pick it up from behind. Okay, let's look at that CB East defensive line. You have Dunbar in the middle, number 50, 5'6", 165 pounds. Left tackle, Tom Scarborough, number 75, 6'190", a senior. Right tackle, Greg LaGreca, number 70, 5'10", 205. They've been the target of those runs up the middle by the Bucks. Norley bootlegs. He's looking for his receiver. Completion is good to man. Man, a smart receiver coming back for the ball, realizing where the first down marker was and realizing I have to catch the ball, get the first down. So that's a first down passing for the Bucks as they continue to move up the field, mixing up both passing and running. Yes, they're, do they're doing an excellent job. They've got a, a very, very excellent game plan for today's ball game. Uh, and, of course, they've been looking forward to this all year. There's no question about it. West undergoing injuries throughout the season. Pretty healthy here today as Norley keeps it, rolls to his right, 
Picks up about six or seven yards on that ramble. Coach Mike Petten happy to have an extra week for some of his players to get healed up during the course of the year. Spinoza was hurt. Um, Todd Norley played, although he was hurt, and several of the other players on CB West. So Coach Mike Petten happy to have everybody healthy for this big contest, which turns out, as no one thought it would, to be the title contest for the Bucks Mine. Here comes Norley up to the line of scrimmage. Number 20, Chris Mann taking the pitch out. That's the uh, <clears throat> same play they ran the last time, uh, Les. That's the power eye uh, to the tight end. And the play, the thing that made that go was the wing back came in and got a great block on the linebacker. And uh, this is what you have to have. You have to have a wing back that can come down and block that linebacker and cut off any pursuit. All right, let's set the ball. The ball is on the 16, between the 15 and 16. It's first and 10 for the Bucks. We have just over five minutes left in the second quarter. The Bucks playing a good time-consuming control game at this stage. There he goes, Norley rolling out to his right. He's got his receiver down there. Looks like Situates again. Can't really see his number as he runs back to the huddle. Not too many guys out there the size of Situates, so I believe it was he. Incomplete pass, good defensive coverage by the Patriots in the secondary. Brings up a second and 10. Here comes Norley. He's going to roll right again. He's going to hang on to it. Cut, cutting back to the center of the field. He's going to be stopped just outside that five-yard line. Yeah, that's a planned, uh, planned run all the way. Uh, Norley just puts the ball up in the air to uh, get that uh, defensive half back to stop just for a second, give him enough uh, room and for the uh, receivers then to get a shield block, and then he turns it up to the inside. Very well executed. He freezes that defensive backfield and picks up close to a first down. He's got third and one. Ball spotted on the seven yard line, just inside the seven. Spinoza gets the call. As we said, John the workhorse in that backfield, six foot two ten senior. Official spots the ball on the five. That's more than enough yardage for a first down. Ball will be first and goal to goal from the five for West. One of the things, Bill, is, is the time that they're chewing up. This offensive series, they started here, oh, just about halfway through the second quarter, and they're just marching down the field, eating up that clock. Oh, yes. He's, he's controlled the ball very well, Lance. Motion. There goes man in motion. Norley rolling back to his left. He's looking to throw. He's got Mann all alone in the end zone. I've seen that touchdown run before. Mann coming off in motion to the left side of the line, going down, sneaking past the secondary for the touchdown. So with 346 left in the second period, that makes the score 13 nothing. And while we have an opportunity and Spencer lines up for the point after, we'd like to remind you that many local businesses help bring you this game today. Some of those good folks include Bob Buttons over at Lawn Depot, Mountain Lake Pool and Patio Shop, and the people at Bucks County Bank and Trust Company. Please let them know you appreciate their support of local television. Collins holding. Spencer will try the point after. Callum putting it down. Spencer kicking it up straight ahead. It's good. That makes it 14 nothing in favor of West. Bill, what does East have to do now? What kind of pressure does that exert on the CP East offensive unit? Oh, that puts a great amount of pressure on being if it's uh, two touchdowns less. Uh, the, if they can't come right back and score before the half, they uh, basically have to go for two because of the tie. Uh, they really don't want a tie, although a tie in this ball game can still give them a piece of the title, I understand. But it's going to put a great amount of pressure on them. The biggest thing that they have to be careful of is they cannot make a lot of foolish mistakes. They can't just tell the quarterback to take the ball and go back and throw it. They've got to 
come out with their same solid attack, but try to be able to be a little bit more aggressive and to uh, maintain the ball from now until they can score before the half is up. Whether or not uh, West is going to allow to do this, West has given them some uh, real crazy defensive looks uh, so far in this first half and has put a great deal of pressure on them. So it's uh, it's got to it's got to mean a lot for East to get on the board. If they don't, they're going to be in a lot of trouble the second half. Well, here's the kickoff. It's taken by East. <laughs> Kelly, number 20, returns the kickoff to the vicinity of the 27-yard line. Make it the 28. <laughs> And see, we were talking a little while ago, uh, two plays prior to uh, Norley's touchdown throw, uh, he came out and put the hand up in the air line with a fake throw, and then he came right back uh, to the other side and did throw at that time, and that's what allowed the uh, halfback to get in behind to make the catch. Here come the Patriots under Chuck Riccone. Kill at quarterback. He hands off to... Number 32, Bobby Branch. Bobby Branch just running through the line deep into the secondary. He stopped on the 45-yard line. I'm impressed with Branch. He gets off the ball very quickly, picks up two good runs here in the first half, and he's got to be the key. Branch oh, yes. is going to have to explode. See, you were asking about the pressure on... Uh on East, West, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on that young defensive line of West right now because they feel maybe they've let down just a little bit because they are up by 14. Here comes Kill. He's back looking to throw. He does throw. He overshoots his receiver, but there's a penalty <laughs> marker down. Number 24, John Mignon, the intended receiver. Officials get together for a conference meeting out by the... 40 yard line. It's got a penalty against West. This will be a break for East because an incomplete pass now comes up to a penalty situation as they march off the penalty against West. 15 yards. Ball will be spotted on the 42 yard line. A first down. It's pass interference against West. The Patriots actually get inside the 50-yard line of the West. West playing excellent defense in the first half, so with 2.55 left in the first quarter, the Patriots take a timeout. Yes, you have a little discussion over Coach Petten and the two officials. I guess he's complaining a little bit about the last call. Uh, quite upset about, uh, about the call. But this, this is the break that uh, East is, has been looking for. And as I said before, uh, the defense for West uh, has been just a little bit relaxed this, this series of plays. Okay, one of the interesting things in the Bucks month, and it was new to me when I came into the area, is that the coaches can actually go out onto the field during timeouts. That makes it interesting, and I think it's a good idea, and it's up to the coach's discretion. Coach Mike Patton just giving his opinion of how that last play happened, and I'm sure if uh, if we had a video replay, they would interestingly see that. Now we have a penalty. Another, oh, okay. Now what the official is going to do is he's going to explain that it wasn't really pass interference; it was holding, uh, illegal chucking of the receiver. So I guess Coach Petten got his explanation, and uh, we have it. So call it <coughs> pass interference, call it holding. The Patriots have a first down, and Bobby Keel has a little less than three minutes to do something with his offense. Well, All right, Hillborn, again, number 33, a 5'8 senior, finding a hole. And as you say, West might be having a defensive lapse or a letdown, feeling that they're up 14 nothing. What happened on that one, Bill? I was just a uh, straight handoff, and uh, he found the daylight and just picked up the, picked up the yardage uh, because I feel that West is laying off a little bit. They're uh, more concerned about passes. They're playing a four-man front with real deep linebackers. Okay, here we go again, the Patriots. Hillborn on the carry. This time he goes to the opposite side, coming left. Ball is on the 30-yard line. That's another first down for the Patriots. First and 10 from the 30, as the Patriots are putting together their first real offensive drive here in the first half. They've got to, they've got to get a little bit quicker, though. Uh, they're wasting much, much, too much time right now. 
Uh, they should be in their two-minute offense list, and they've been in that huddle uh, much too long. Okay, the official checking his watch here. They have 30 seconds to get the playoff. Keel comes up, rushes at the line of scrimmage. Another straight handoff. Doing some real bulwark. Okay, Chris Hilborn showing you why he's such a good runner. Second effort. Got the ball down, pick up a seven on the play, make it second and three. Hilborn just digging into the ground, refusing to go down. Keel coming up to the line, as you said, Bill, had used up a lot of time in that huddle, and he called for a quick snap and got the ball off to Hilborn. Make it second and three for the Patriots. Here's the pitch out, this time to 24, John Mignon. He goes right. Now they're getting down to the real tough territory, uh, Les. Uh, when you get the ball down here, of course, it shortens the pass patterns and the pass routes, which can allow C.B. West to bring their defensive backs up a little bit tighter and play a little bit tougher. They've been laying their linebackers off, and uh, Chuck is, uh, has done a very excellent job of picking that up and keeping the ball on the ground. The thing is, he's got, he's got to get the ball up in the air or he's got to utilize his timeouts now because with a minute and three seconds to go, uh, he knows he's got to get on the scoreboard before the hand. Uh, this drive is going to bring back their enthusiasm and, and their confidence that they can move it, but they've got to get on the scoreboard if they expect to uh, really be competitive the second half. Well, Riccone having a long discussion with Bobby Keel, and they realize the importance of this next minute and three seconds because uh, West, if they can hold them, will more or less so set the tone and dominate the first half in all reality. On the other hand, East can sort of recover from some uh, poor defensive performances uh, or West capitalization and get on the scoreboard with a touchdown. Here's the play. Bobby Branch coming off the left side of the line. Good defensive pursuit by that right side of the West line. No real gain on that play. We're waiting for him to spot the ball. East without a huddle, lining up again. Keel taking the ball. He passes. It's incomplete. That'll stop the clock. His intended receiver was Bobby Branch. Good play on the sense of Keel to realize if I throw it out of bounds, it'll stop the clock and not use up a timeout. Yes, that was, that was an excellent call. And... Uh, Bobby did, did the only thing that he was capable of doing at that particular time. We take a glance at the scoreboard clock here at the James Work Memorial Stadium. Shows that there's only 42 seconds left in the second quarter or first half. Pressure's on East to put this one in. Here comes Keel up to the line of scrimmage. He's looking to throw. He does. Incomplete. A little flood pattern there. Two receivers down in that area. Mallory, number 27, I think was the intended receiver. Yeah, I think Chesowitz got his hand on that ball too a little bit less than, and uh, just at the uh, beginning and it, it caused the ball to flicker just a little bit. All right. Good defensive play by Chesowitz there. We got a Fourth down, nine yards to go. Now you talk about a big play. On the scoreboard clock, which I believe today is official because there is an official on the operating controls. 38 seconds, fourth and nine. Kill back. He's looking. He's scrambling. Penalty markers down. He throws. Number 24, Mignon, is wide open. But we do have penalty markers down in the backfield. And this will be an interesting call. I think it's a holding call against CB East. The officials are calling it back. Holding against East will negate the touchdown. The halfback that came out to, Bob Sitch, uh, to block Sitchewicz uh, did a real good job blocking. Sitchewicz went to his inside, and as he did, he grabbed him by the jersey. And uh, it's just one of those unfortunate things for CB East. So a moment of ecstatic joy turns into, oh no, 29 seconds left. The ball will be marched back to the 30-yard line. Brings up a fourth and 25, approximately. So the Patriots really have the work cut out for them as they're pushed back the field. 
That was a good call. Uh, Situates there explaining to the official what actually happened to him, and uh, he did get the penalty marker thrown. So now the Patriots really have their back to the wall. Okay, we have penalty markers down here as uh, someone jumped the line of scrimmage. A penalty here will really put East in bad shape. They're going to have to procedure penalty. That's what it is against East. Five more yards will be marched off against them. And now they don't care how many yards they have to go. They're more or less going to have to try to put the ball up and come up with a touchdown or uh, a first down. That's five more yards. That just puts them deeper in the hole. The one thing they do have that will give them a one very, very slight advantage of, they have a lot more room to throw the ball on the receivers if, uh, if the quarterback can get himself a little bit of, Bobby can get himself a little bit of freedom to run, uh, the, one of the receivers can't find an open area. There's a lot more field there. 29 seconds, but only one down here. As Kill rolls out, everybody in the stadium knows he is going to. He's pursued in the backfield. He does get the pass off. It's incomplete. Mignon was the intended receiver. It would have been short of a first down, so uh, wouldn't have made that much different. West would have took over, but more importantly, they do take over on the incompletion. And we'll see what Coach Mike Petten does. Uh, 22 seconds left in the second quarter. He should be content with a 14-0 lead. Uh, I'm sure he's instructing Todd Norley exactly what he wants to do in this last 22 seconds. Well, he, he just might figure out know, that East is down a little bit uh, after not uh, you know, getting the touchdown taken away from him. He just liable to come out and throw it. So I figure if he gets a real quick one before the halftime, that, uh, then he's going to be in much better shape. Penalties hurting East Drive, stalling it and keeping them off the scoreboard here. Here's Norley. He's back to throw, as you said, Bill, but he's going to fall down on the ball and protect it. And I think he's going to let the clock run out. They'll go back in their huddle, but right now we're down to the 10-second mark. Brings up a second and 16. Somebody's going to take a timeout. East is going to take a timeout. They want to stop the clock and see if they can do something defensively to get possession back. Coach Mike Petten making his way out to meet Todd Norley over by the west sideline. Well, when you look at the first half, Les, you've seen uh, there's been a couple breaks. Probably the biggest break the West got uh, to help set up their second score was when they fumble uh, right out here in front of us, and it was kicked by a CB West lineman and went out of bounds, and they got the ball back. East should have had the ball, uh, but the uh, boy tried to pick it up rather than fall on it. That was a real good break and kept their drive going, and they went in and scored and in the penalties against uh, uh, CB East down here when they did score the touchdown to call it back, uh, changed the complexion of the, of the rest of the first half. Because we could have very easily had a 14-7 uh, halftime score. Now it looks like we're going to go in a 14 nothing, and both coaches are going to have two entirely different problems to cope with at halftime. Okay, on the scoreboard clock, we have five seconds, so this will be the last play of the first half. Norley at quarterback. He gives to number 21, Bobby Callum. Callum going to the left side of the line. That runs out the clock at the end of the first half. So, ladies and gentlemen, in this traditional Thanksgiving contest at halftime, the score... The Bucks of Central Bucks West 14, the Patriots of East 0. We're getting ready now for the second half kickoff. Uh, a long halftime. It will be interesting to see what kind of intensity they start out uh, with in the second half. I know, Bill, one of the things that Chuck Riccone was concerned with is, uh, you know, if, if West gets on the scoreboard and uh, sort of dominates as they had in the first half, what type of resilience will his East ha team has? On the other hand, we should also mention that East has been a second half team through several games in the season, and we're looking forward to an exciting second half of Bucksmont Championship football. And here's the kickoff, ladies and gentlemen, of the second half. Branch kicking the ball off. Doesn't look like intensity is going to be a problem here as 
both teams coming and hitting on that kickoff. Ball was spotted in the vicinity of the 28-yard line. <clears throat> West takes over first and 10, let's say, from the 28-yard line. We'll see if they get their offense rolling again. Norley at quarterback. Well, that answers the question about intensity as the defensive unit from the Patriots busts through that line. They catch Norley in the backfield. Well, this is what I said, Les. This is what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to attack Norley uh, right now. They're not going to have to uh, allow him to get any freedom if they're going to win the football game. They're going to have to attack him because as of the first half, uh, Spinoza has not carried the ball very much and has not given him the uh, type of ground game that I think Coach Petten wants. So they're going to have to have to attack Norley and take the offense away from West. Loss of four on the play brings up a second and 14. Norley rolling to his right. Defensive pursuit. He gets the pass off wide open out in the flat. Number 20, Chris Mann. And he's on his way down the sideline. Chris Mann sprinting, being pursued by the defense of East and finally tackled. He's caught by Bernie Kelly, number 20, a 5'11", 170-pound senior over there on the sideline. Well, what we had over there, Les, we had a mix-up in defensive assignments. Uh, the back that was uh, supposed to be covering the zone came up because he saw Sitchewicz, uh right up in there. He came up to cover Sitchewicz. The ball was slightly over Sitchewicz's head. Man had caught the ball. Sitchewicz made a block on that defensive halfback, and here you are down in the 13-yard uh, line. That's a big play to start the second half, and West is going to take a timeout. They realize that that was a big play. They're going to let their offensive unit take a breather. Chris Mann, number 20, making that completion. We'll be back to cover more action here from the James Work Memorial Stadium right after this message. Okay, here we are. First and ten for the Bucks. Norley handing off this time to number 20, Chris Mann, the same fellow who just made that long completion run. Gain of about six on the play brings up a second and four. Ball was spotted on the, let's call it the eight-yard line. Substitutes running in plays for West. Norley calling the play, coming right back up to the line of scrimmage. Here they come with the double slot left again. Number 20, man. What those receivers do is they pull those defensive men back and gives them a little more time on that left side, and man picks up a little gain on that play. Let's say a little gain. He's got about five yards. It's going to be close to a first down. They're going to have to measure this one, Bill. Yes. Uh, see, what's happening right now is that uh, Mann is getting a lot of freedom. And uh, as you said, with the double slot, they're uh, forcing the defensive backs off the line of scrimmage a little bit. And they're getting the ball to Mann from there. They're getting the ball to Mann on the passing. And then, of course, you still have Morley as a threat. Uh, what they're going to have to do, East is going to have to widen their defense out a little bit and take that away from them. And then, of course, uh, CB West can counter with uh, Spinoza up the middle. At the present time, they've cut off the inside game, but uh, they've given up the outside game in return. Okay, as you saw in our camera coverage down on the field, it was a first down, no question about that. First and goal to goal from the three-yard line. Man gets the carry and gets the touchdown as he takes it in from the three-yard line, running basically the same play, attacking the right side of that defensive line. Man just getting across. Well, that's definitely going to make things tough for the Patriots now, Bill. Coming out. In the beginning of the second half, West marching down the field uh, via the air lanes uh, for a big piece of real estate, coming down, pushing it across with Chris Mann, and this extra point by Spencer will widen the gap. There's the snap, Callum puts it down, Spencer drives it through. Official indicates that it's good, so with 9.48 left in the... Uh, third quarter. 
That makes the score 21 nothing. And while okay, the West fans celebrate an early third quarter touchdown. Yeah, they large just, crowd here today, Bill, just encircling the track and uh, fence area, and also a large number of people on top of their cars in the parking lot. A good turnout on a perfect day for football. The Patriots hope that they can get something going offensively to make it a better day for their fans. Spencer lining up for the kickoff. This will be it now for the Patriots. They're going to have to mount some type of drive and move the ball or West can turn this thing into a real one-sided contest. Well, when you have when you have the threats that uh, West has with Morley and, and Mann today, uh, getting to the outside where they get that daylight, it's a pretty tough situation. Here's the kickoff. Return is on to the right side, forced out of bounds. Spencer in on that tackle. Number. 20, I believe, Kelly returning that ball up to the 34 yard line. Make it the 33. First and 10 for the Patriots from the 33. Bobby Keel having his work cut out for him. There's a good run by Bobby Branch, number 32. A real explosive runner, Bobby Branch, picking up a first down for East, and he's the type of player that they need. They're going to have to break open some big plays to get back in this contest. Bobby Branch, 5'10", 200-pound senior, uh, he runs a little quicker than 200 pounds. Yeah, that was uh, that's the same uh, same play they ran just before the uh, half was uh, was over. Have made uh, considerable yardage on it then. Here's Kale. He's going to hand off again. Branch gets the handoff again. This time he goes to the opposite side of the line. He picks up about three. Give him three, make it second and seven. Second and seven on the play for the Patriots. You can see the Patriots coming out of the huddle quicker, moving up to the line of scrimmage. I think that they realize the clock is against them and they're going to have to keep the ball moving. Keel coming up to the quarterback. He's going to throw this time. He gets away from good defensive pursuit by Situates. Penalty markers down. The ball's thrown up. Everybody going after it, and it's incomplete. However, we have a penalty marker down deep in the backfield, the offensive backfield. And this should be an interesting call. It's, it's going to be a clip. clip. It's going to be a clip. The, uh, the back came back, and the uh, defensive uh, onrusher turned his back, and uh, he got caught in the clip, and it's going to hurt CB East again. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they do take the penalty because they, <clears throat> they're thinking about it down there. They, they will take the penalty because it'll be, I uh, always, always take the 15 yards. The 15 yards they're going to take. Uh, it's, when you have a scrambling quarterback, and I know they talk about it a lot, and you're blocking, you don't know exactly where that quarterback is. A clip becomes a very uh, viable possibility. And in that case, uh, Everybody was uh, after the quarterback, and they had good defensive pursuit situates there, making two good moves to get Bobby Keel, and Keel just throwing the ball up. So that's really going to put the Patriots in a the hole. They'll have a, a second and close to 25, and Keel's going to have to throw now. Another pass almost intercepted. John Spinoza had his hand in on the ball. Mignon was the intended receiver. Buck's defense rising to the occasion. They have good pass protection and they're putting the pressure on Keel. So with that combination, it's going to make him tough to get the ball off and Keel has his work cut out for him. Well, a, a number of, the, number of the times we've also seen, uh, Les, where they put Sitzowicz in a situation where he's on the uh, split inside or the slot side so that he can get a little bit more depth into the backfield right now. And at six foot five, he can get his hands up on the line of scrimmage and cause a quarterback problems. There goes Keel to the airwaves again. Again, defensive pursuit. He's tackled in the backfield. And who else? Number 88, Bob Situates. Situates has spent a lot of time chasing Keel around in that backfield. Yes, well, he, he's in a position that he's not being hit right now. 
Uh, he's not getting uh, anybody to come out on him. They've got the uh, tackle covered, and he's got pretty much uh, freedom. So if the slot back or the up halfback has to take him, he's still getting uh, some freedom to start with. So he's going to be able to cause him a lot of problems before the day is over. Okay, man back in single safety to take this punt. Good punt. Gets a good punt off. Man takes it on the run. Tackled almost immediately down in the vicinity of the 47-yard line. <clears throat> Ebo on the ta tackle there. We have about 7.45 left in the third period. West with the ball. Norley coming out from the sideline. Offensively, that line centered. You got Jim Richardson. Guards, you got Hedrick and Drexler in there. Man going in motion. Norley on the quarterback keeper, penalty markers down. Cordry and Rapsnyder at tackle, Situates at split end and Nichols at tight end. In the backfield you have Norley, Spinoza, Callum and Mann. Gives you an idea. Penalty will be against the West for motion. A lot of penalties here in the early part of the second half. Official having a conference with East to determine what they want. That sort of surprised me. He's take, taking the penalty at this time, being a first down situation. I thought they uh, might uh, not take the penalty because they, they've got to get the ball. They cannot score without the ball. And uh, uh, West has uh, got their enthusiasm going again after that uh, real quick uh, score here in the beginning of the third quarter. First and 15, Raccone probably fig figuring on field position over the down, brings up a first and 15. Norley hands off to Mann and he's tackled right at the line of scrimmage. LaGreca, Greg LaGreca, number 75, 10, 205 pound sophomore. Youngster in there, making a good play on that. He was helped by some more of those interior defensive linemen. Farrington and Dunbar in there helping out. That defensive line has its work cut out for it in the remainder of the game if the Patriots are going to do anything in today's contest. Second and 17, Norley rolling out. He tucks it under his arm. He goes back past the line of scrimmage, bringing the ball up to the 45-yard line. Okay, Norley bringing the ball up to the 45, brings up a third and 12. That penalty there, the ball not back to the original line of scrimmage yet, but third down and 12 in the big defensive play now by the Patriots. If they can stop them here and get possession back, they'll have some time in the third quarter. Norley looking to pass, checks out all of his receivers. He throws this one long. It's going to be intercepted. Chris Hoburn, number 33, intercepts the pass, returns it to the 30-yard line. Man in on the tackle, man being the intended receiver on that play, and uh, I don't know, Bill, it looked like it was just thrown a little short. It was, it was thrown short. They, uh, uh, Todd had uh, time early uh, to throw it, then he delayed for a second, and uh, one of the linebackers put a little bit of rush on him and then they threw the ball. Okay, big defensive play by the Patriots. Here they come up on the ball. Bobby Keel, a quarterback. He has Hillborn and Branch behind him. Bobby Branch on the carry. He picks up about five. Gets the ball up to the 35-yard line, just short of the 35. Make it second and five for the Patriots. Raccone coming back with a running play. Well, I think Chuck is hoping that uh, he's he's going to break one of these uh, fairly quickly. Uh, Branch is broken, but hasn't been able to go the distance, and I think he's hoping that he can go the distance on one of them, put him back in the game. Mignon goes in motion. Here's the handoff. Branch again, testing the center of that defensive line. He gains about two on that play. Make it third and about... 
three yards to go. Third and a long three. Branch and Hillborn, both fine runners. And if they have the opportunity to break some tackles, they'll do it, and they can open one up. A defensive unit for Bucks. Uh, the secondary on every run play just has pursuit, lateral pursuit, and is, is stopping those running backs from east. Here's a pitch out, this time to Chris Hilburn. Hilburn picks up the first down for the Patriots. Ball spotted on the 49 yard line. Ball on the 44 yard line. I'm sorry, the ball's on the 44. It's just about four minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, that clock runs very fast when both teams are keeping it on the ground. <laughs> That's true. We haven't seen a lot of passing except for a long west bomb that set up that touchdown. This one will go in the air. No, it won't as Bobby Keel goes down on the ground. He wanted to throw that one, but his feet slid out from underneath him. And that's going to hurt because that'll bring up a second and uh, 20. Second down and 20. Sometimes the poor footing is a better defensive player than uh, the guys chasing you. Kiel tucking that ball under his arm and going down on the turf with it. Well, this seems to be the pattern for the day well after this play. Here comes a pitch back. To Branch. Okay, Bill, tell me about that pattern. Uh, this uh, seems to be the pattern for the day for CB East. Uh, they get a, they get a, something going for them, and then they have it stopped by a penalty. Uh, they've had it stopped uh, uh, twice in the ball game where uh, the quarterback has slipped, and uh, it seems to be just that type of day for them, and uh, they haven't been able to get completely untracked. And while wow, they're just keeping longer and longer for him to get on track. Okay, here's another handoff. Number 33, Chris Hillborn. Now we're back, now we're back into a punting situation and we only have uh, two minutes and 20 some seconds left to go, Les. And I'm sure the CB East uh, is going to have some problems now because West is going to, I would think, sit on the ball a little bit. No runner sweeps and let Norley run wide and just try to control the ball from here on out. Nick Bitsko on that tackle on the last play sets up the punting situation. Good punt this time. Man calling for the fair catch. The ball will be spotted in the vicinity of the 27-yard line. And West has the ball, and there's 1.55 left in the third quarter. While we have a break in the action, ladies and gentlemen, at today's Thanksgiving game, let's have a message from one of today's sponsors. First and ten from the Bucks, Norley at quarterback. Todd still has the ball. He rolls out to his right, rolls out of bounds, picking up approximately a yard. I think that was a definitely designed run play. He just didn't have any room to go anywhere. No question about it. And I, I think if uh, if Norley was at full strength, he probably would have tried to turn up field less. But uh, being very smart, he did step out of bounds. Okay, brings up a. Uh, Second and 11, as Norley actually went behind the down marker, so brings up a second and 11. Here comes Norley. He passes to number 21, Bobby Callum, on that little peak pass over the middle. It's a good play. He picks up a few yards on that one. Well, that's the type of football play that you just cannot take away from him. You've got to give him heat. Uh, Norley is a great control type passer and there are certain pass patterns that you cannot take away from. He can sprint out uh, and just drop the ball to the halfback for four or five yards and you cannot uh, stop them. What you've got to be able to do is come back up and make the, uh, the good defensive play after the ball is caught. Okay, while we have a time for a measurement, we <clears throat> it's a good time to let our viewers know that we'd like to hear more from them about local programs. As we really gear up for more local television, it is the community involvement that can make this channel live up to its exciting potentials. With our ability to title cast live within the next month or so, 
we hope to have audience participation programs and call-in shows as a part of our regular TV lineup. Okay, the Bucks on the move. Norway coming up. Quick handoff. Looks like John Spinoza in there behind that surging offensive line. He picks up the first down. So as I was saying about the potential of cable TV, don't be bashful. Give HomeView a call at 345-5151 and let us know what kinds of programs you like to see. We will also be training local people to actually participate in these productions. So take advantage of this opportunity to get all the positive events in our community on television. That number once again, 345-5151. First and ten from the Bucks from CB West. John Spinoza taking the tackle, rambling off the left side of that line. He picks up about eight yards on that play. The, wor the workhorse, right? That's the first time that he's run like, like he's capable of running. Uh, he just decided he's going to take the football and he's going to stick it right down their throats and ran the way he is capable of running. All right, as the clock winds down here, under 30 seconds in the third period, the Bucks of CB West on a drive. Here comes another pitch back to Chris Mann, number 20. He picks up a first down. First down rushing for Central Bucks. Chuck Racconi sending substitutes in there, hoping that someone will help shore up that defensive unit. Well, this is what we're going to be faced with from, uh, from now to the end of the ball game, as long as West has the ball, Les, I think they're just gonna they're just gonna control the ball uh, and just come right straight at him. Here we're gonna end up with uh, with a quarter, uh, and they're just gonna they're just gonna take the football, they're gonna control the football uh, for the last quarter if they possibly can. Okay, here we are at the end of the third quarter. The score 21 nothing. Let's take this opportunity to have a message of one of from one of today's community sponsors. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here now for the start of fourth quarter action. The Central Bucks West team on the move. Here's a handoff to number 20, Chris Mann. Whistles blow, but Chris refuses to go down. We'll see where the officials spot the ball. will be back in the vicinity of the 43-yard line, 44-yard line. As we orient ourselves now as they change position, brings up a... Second down and two yards to go for the Bucks. Coach Mike Petton has to be pleased with the performance of his offensive line this afternoon. Man in motion. Play goes to the left side as Norley keeps it. Interesting there, Man and Spinoza getting out there to lead the blocking. Well, we reached a situation in the ball game right now that uh, that the enthusiasm and the intensity of West is just uh, going up. He seems to be dropping off a little bit, and every back that's running the ball now has picked up confidence and gives it a little bit more aggressive. Just like uh, when Mann carried the ball on the play before, and the whistle blew it dead. His feet were still driving. We didn't see that earlier in the ball game, but it's really started to pick up and it's starting to show the dominance. Uh, of this ball game at this point uh, by West. They're really starting to dominate it uh, quite heavily. Okay, we saw there from our coverage on the field that West did pick up the first down, so it's first and ten for Bucks as they continue to drive against the Patriots. Here's a pass thrown by number 14. Uh, incomplete as it fell short. Situich was the receiver out there. Walt Kabrinsky, the backup quarterback for Central Bucks West, taking that shuffle lateral from Norley and uh, looking to hit uh, Situich, perhaps keeping, you know, catching the Patriots' defense asleep. Kabrinsky has played some at quarterback as he is Norley's quarterback. Backup. There's Norley, he wants to throw now. 
Here comes that screen pass that we saw so effectively used in the first half. It goes out to number Chris Mann, and he stopped down in the vicinity of another first down. They execute that well, Bill. We saw it in the first half and here again now in the fourth quarter. Yes, very, very well. They, they, they do that as well as any high school team I've ever seen throw the uh, screen pass. And uh, Mike's getting a little impatient, I think, over there. I think he uh, wants to put another one on the board. I, I thought for a while he was going to completely control the ball game, keeping it on the ground, but... Uh, two passes in a row, but he's looking for that quick, easy one, really. Okay, the Bucks driving here, coming off a screen pass, setting up a good field position move. Here goes the handoff. Man carrying the ball. Man carrying the ball, lunges for an extra yard. Mignon in on the tackle for East. That'll give them a first down without a doubt. There won't have to be a measurement on this one. As they keep the ball on the ground, we see the clock just winding down. We have 9.50 left in the final period. Here comes a reverse. Number 20 man taking the handoff from Spinoza, but they don't fool anybody as the Patriot defense responds. Yeah, they play it well, but again, what you have, Les, is you have a situation of a play that took quite a bit of time. And it's the uh, keeping the ball and uh, just controlling the ball game right now. You will see in this series, um, undoubtedly though, you'll see Mike try to throw one because he lost a couple yards and he wants to keep the ball. So he, he's either going to come and go for the bomb or maybe let Norley uh, come back with a control pass game. Okay, we have a loss of two on the play. It brings up a second and 12. And as you said, here's Norley back to throw. He's got Situates out there right off of Bobby's fingertips in the vicinity of the 15-yard line. Bernie Kelly, number 20, 5'11", senior, having his hands full with Situates, but doing a good job defensively, not rushing the hit and making the contact just as the ball was going through the hands of Situates. So that's a good defensive play for Bernie Qu Kelly, number 20, 5'11", 170-pound senior. Brings up a third and 12, Bill. You think they're going to throw again? Well, Norley had the end pretty well turned on that last play, and there's a very good possibility they might come back with a run-pass option. Norley coming up to the line of scrimmage. Rolling back, stepping into the pocket, throwing the ball as he's hit. Number 21, Bob Callum, catching the ball and falling immediately to the ground. Norley was met by a, two or three defensive players from East. But uh, brings up a fourth down, ball on the 19. Let's make it four for five. I have to give Todd some credit for just getting that pass off. And even uh, Bobby Callum for making a fine catch. Well, that was uh, somewhat in the lines of a drop-back pass, and uh, he hasn't dropped back all, all day, Les, so it's a little different uh, stepping for him, and he just uh, wasn't used to it. Here he Norley comes. to throw again. This time he catches Mann. Mann catching the ball in the vicinity of the 11-yard line. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about, the little control, uh, short sprint out, uh, patterns that uh, you almost have to give them. Because if you come up too too fast and after half back just spins and goes deep and then Norley's capable of throwing on the run and throwing the ball deep. All right, the ball spotted on the 11, Bill. That gives him a first down. The Bucks are going to take a timeout. And while we have a timeout on the field, let's have a message from one of our Thanksgiving Day sponsors. <laughs> that 20. Yeah. Time out here on the field as we see a coaching staff from East to talking over their situation and coach Mike Patton from West <coughs> talking to his offensive unit saying let's go fellas let's push this one in. It's one of those more or less uh, give me a little type of break situation time out and uh, a chance for the Bucks to organize their attack. They realize they're on the 11 yard line and if they push this one across, it's 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 over. It's good night and they can start celebrating on that side. On the 12 yard line. Let's down. There aren't too many people leaving though, Bill. It's really interesting. No. Nobody's left their seats yet. 
perfect day for the Thanksgiving matchup here at the James Work Memorial Stadium. Delaware Valley College serving host for this annual affair. Nurley roll, rolling out. He tucks the ball under his arm, makes a nice dancing move, holding on to it. We have a substitution in there. Uh, Mike no, Petten. Number 11, Mike Petten in the backfield. Uh, this is what I this is what I was talking about, how Norley has controlled the ball game most of the day. Uh, he's come out there, he's put the ball up in the air, he's, he's held everybody, he sees a little bit of daylight, and he turns, he runs with the football. He has really been the controlling factor for the for the uh, Bucks today. Okay, we have a second and five for Norley and company. He keeps it. He stopped at the five-yard line. Hillborn in on the tackle for the Patriots. Faked a little handoff into the line, kept the ball and rolled right. All right, Bill, what does he do now? Well, he's run Marley twice now. I'm not so sure whether he'll run him again or whether he's going to uh, whether he's going to give the ball to Spinoza. Usually down in this area, uh, Mike likes to give the ball to his big fullback. Uh, and, you know, even in past history, he's always given it to his fullback. But Spinoza's not running uh, like he always has, so I'm not so sure whether he will give it to him. All right, he's got Man, Callum, and Spinoza lined up, and they now move to flanker left position. He's going to give it to Spinoza, just as you said, Bill, and Spinoza bulls his way down to the vicinity of the one-yard line. He stopped short of the touchdown. However, he just put his head down and, and dug in. We'll see where they actually spot the ball after they get up. First down, so that'll make it even more interesting. It'll be first and goal to goal, and the ball spotted just outside the one-yard line. Wonderful place to have a first down. <laughs> the Bucks, as they have all afternoon, dominated offensively in today's contest. Same formation. This time Spinoza, same play. Official indicates that he did cross the plane at the line of touchdown, so it'll be uh, what I'm saying is they hesitated a second and they watched where Spinoza actually crossed the plane at the goal line, and they give him the touchdown. With 6-17, that makes the score 27-0. And Spencer doesn't waste any time getting out there lining up that kicking tee. He wants to push this one across. Well, John... Uh John Spinoza ran, ran very, very well in those two. He got crucial yards. Uh, it wasn't the 12, 14 yard runs or anything, but he got the crucial yards. He got the first down as well as the touchdown. They have the muddle huddle. Now they're coming over. Bobby Callum, number 21, holding the ball. Spencer will get a good shot at it. It's no good. That extra point. <laughs> Not good as it just about trickles off the foot. However, that makes the score the Bucks of Central Bucks 27, the Patriots of CB East 0. Okay, we're back here with 6.17 left in the final period as the Bucks will kick off to the Patriots. Spencer. Getting a good workout today with his extra points and kickoffs. He gets a good kickoff here. Mignon taking the kickoff, returning the ball down to the vicinity of the 25-yard line. Wait for the officials to spot the ball. All right, the officials spot the ball just outside the 25. For official purposes, it will be on the 26-yard line. First and 10 for the Patriots, as the clock is their worst enemy. Comes Kiel to throw. He's got number 27. Mowry wide open. Out here in the side, Norley in on the tackle. We're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of clean white shirts in there for the uh, Bucks now on defense. 
uh, which is nice to see. Uh, I don't know whether they're seniors, juniors, or what. I mean, I hope that most of them are all the seniors are getting a chance to play, you know, in their Thanksgiving Day ball game. <coughs> it's a great thrill for these kids to participate in this game. Real tradition here in Doylestown. Kiel back to throw again. He realizes he's got to put it up in the air. Same pattern, but to the opposite side. Number 24. <coughs> Mignon again with the reception. <coughs> Officials are going to take a timeout again to see if they have the first down. I think they're going to give it to him as they move the markers. There's also an injured player there being attended to on the sideline right in front of the west bench. <laughs> Bob Callum gets up under his own power, temporarily shook up on that play. I'd like to take, thank, yeah, take this opportunity to thank the people both at CB East and CB West for their help. Uh, Ernie Gash, Dr. Trying to thank people and follow the play. That time was Bobby Branch on the on the carry. He picked up about nine yards. Ken Uber being among those that we have to thank. Uh, Ernie Gash begins working on this game around Labor Day, getting everything organized. Got Dr. Gallagher and Dr. Spar, the respective principals, Ernie Gash, Dan McFarlane, and Ken Uber. We'd like to extend our congratulations and thank you to those fine administrators. Here's Keel. He's going to hand the ball off this time. Hillborn gets some running room here. Number 33, Chris Hillborn. That's another first down as the ball spotted on the 30. And perhaps the defensive unit for the Bucks wants to celebrate a little prematurely. Yes, they, uh, they've they been very lax on this. But as I said earlier, they've got a couple, uh, couple clean shirts in there. And... Uh, they're not putting the pressure on and they're giving a little bit more daylight. Penalty markers down. Play getting a little sloppy here as we get to the four minute and 11 second mark. I'd like to thank uh, both coaching staffs who have been very cooperative throughout the season with the Moose Luncheon and Homeview Cable. CB West, of course, head coach Mike Petton and CB East Chuck Riccone. Both these fine coaches and gentlemen uh, always willing to, to help us out as we try to bring to you coverage of both CB East and CB West football. Well, you're seeing a lot of the East fans leave now, and I don't think you'll see any of the West fans leave for quite a while. They're going to be here uh, to celebrate it. Maybe a few of the mothers in the West are going to go home and have the turkey on the table by the time they all get home. I noticed that the... Uh, <coughs> The coaches from CB West were up here in the uh, press box uh, on the phones have now uh, gone down the field to join the rest of the coaches and the team. They think they've got the game pretty well wrapped up right now. It's just a matter of what the final score will be. There's a pass. Nice catch. And a super driving attempt after the catch. Mignon catching that ball on his fingertips and lunging forward. He gets inside the 10-yard line. I know Chuck Riccone, for psychological reasons, wants to push this one across here late in the fourth period. Oh, yes. he's uh, He's got to get the score here. And, of course, Chuck's got a lot of this team returning. Both teams very young. Here's Kale, this time the handoff going back to the middle. Bobby Branch taking the handoff, gets down to the five yard line. We look across those lines, both offensively and defensively, for both schools that are a lot of young people there. And uh, both coaches pleased even to be in today's contest playing for the Bucksmont Championship. But uh, as you know, any given Saturday, or in this case Thanksgiving, anything can happen. Hatboro being upset by Wissahickon set the stage for today's contest. Number 32, Bobby Branch, coughs up the ball. However, the officials are going to rule that it was dead. And blew the whistle on the five-yard line. Ball spotted on the five. A lot of upset fans over on that west side about that call.
Rakoni breathes a sigh of relief and he says, well, at least something went right today. Okay, we have a third down. Kill back to throw. He's got a receiver open. Mignon catching the ball, number 24 on that rollout by Bobby Keel. Gives East their first score today and gives the East fans something to celebrate as they cut loose with some red, white, and blue balloons from the home section as East is the host in today's game. The interesting, they're huddling here. It looks like they're going to go for two. Oh, yes, no question about it. They line up. Kill coming up. He's going back. He's going to pitch the ball out. And they do get the two point conversion. Bobby Branch carrying it in. Give them the two point conversion. That makes the score 27 8. That's typical of the way Branch has run all day. He just ran over people. He wanted that very badly. There was three players left laying out on the field that he just ran right over the top of. Uh, he's played an outstanding ball game today for uh, CB East. All right, we're back here as the East fans celebrate for their team coming up with a touchdown and a two-point conversion, making the score 27 to 8. Some of them starting to file out now to beat the, the rush out of the parking lots. Branch will kick off for the Patriots. I would look for an onside kick right here. You're right, Bill. Ball taken at the 50-yard line and immediately downed. I couldn't tell who caught that ball. Situates. Situates down to number 88. He's a receiver, so he's the type of person you want on that line. Also a basketball player, and I hope he has good hands. So good field position as the onside's kick, which have to, has to travel 10 yards, uh, really just about made it. And West falling on the ball, they'll have possession. We'll see some substitutions in there for the West offensive unit. I hope we can keep track of most of them. Norley's well, still in there in quarterback. still got Norley in, and it looks like Spinoza's still in there. Okay, Spinoza yeah. carrying the ball. Their job yeah. right now is to protect the ball. Protect the ball. This is a tough time in the game when your quarterback goes in the huddle and calls your number, and you know, well, I have to run it, but I have to be conservative. Two yards on that play picked up by Spinoza. Spinoza having a good afternoon, scoring that touchdown and playing some outstanding uh, offensive work. He's blocked very well today. Here comes Norley, he pitches out. Manella, 5'7 wing, coming in. Joe's a senior, so this is a great opportunity for him to end his high school career playing in the Thanksgiving contest. Yeah, I would think that most everybody on the field right now, uh, if there's not a senior playing in their position, uh, that their seniors are out there. I think Mike has given all the seniors a chance, and Chuck is doing the same thing on his side. Third and five for the Bucks. Spinoza again, pulling forward. Well, the Bucks, who many thought were going to have a so-so season because of injuries throughout the season, come back and take a 27-8 lead into the final seconds here and a share of the championship as uh, they prove that you just have to go out and play every game and do your best. Here's another pitch out, this time to Bobby Callum. Ball carried by number 21, Bob Plum. It's another first down, Les. Now we got 22 seconds left in the ball game. And uh, the Bucks have controlled it the, the whole second half. That, uh, that I think at the beginning of the second half was, was the tone setter for the, for the I rest think of that the crushed game. CB East right there. When they came up and got the 21 mm -hmm. nothing lead on that long pass, which set up the touchdown, that definitely set the tone. Okay, we see massive substitutions here as the clock winds down. And that's going to be the end. The final score, CB West 27, CB East 8.
and we'll be back.